We're inviting questions for discussion. Uh, yeah. One at the back. The person who's been waiting by the pillar. Uh, person at the front who wanted to ask a question about vaccine efficacy. Uh, not looking at you, behind you. Behind you. Yeah. Do you want to put your hand up and get to oh. get the machine? Yeah. Anybody else? Oh, yes, an online question too. Uh, yeah. I guess I get to go first because yes. I have the yeah. voice of the people. But um, so, Matt, this is actually a clarification question for you, um, which is in arm two. How did you ensure all contacts were at home 24 hours after the diagnosis to do direct observed administration? Uh, very quickly, we, we just, w if people weren't home, we came back. But we didn't leave any Cipro. Okay. Okay. Next. Oh, that was easy. Next? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if you can catch it. Uh, the question was just to the modeler. Sorry, Flavio. Um, did you include estimates of vaccine coverage in the model? And no, because no, because they were very. It was very unclear what previous vaccine coverage of those populations were when they were still in Myanmar. So it was mainly assumption based, um, talking to people, what they would think it could be. Okay, now we're going to collect discussion questions. Uh, Lots of hands up at the back. Two hands in the back row and one here by the pillar. Yeah? Would you like to start yeah. while the others collect the microphone? So the question is for Bashir. Happy birthday. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. OK. So we thanks for the study because it's been long due and very needed. Uh, I'm wondering there before the study happened there was a lot there were a lot of proposals uh, Matt and I were in a meeting last year and there were already a lot of proposals to do uh, dis distribution of SMC for people to just take at home uh, have you reported these results back to the Niger Ministry of Health and to other organizations doing SMC and what has been the response is, is this actually going to affect the, the implementation plans for many of those organizations. Okay, while you're thinking about that, uh, two questions at the back. Yes. Yep. Uh, this is a question for Baki Asao. Can you please tell us who you are and your affiliation? Uh, yes, I am. My name is Ivan, and I am from MSF OCB. Um, my question is: I saw that um, uh, you did a match at case control study, and you decide. <laughs> to match by age and village of origin. This uh, choice to match by village of origin was done because of different prevalence in these areas or because of uh, uh, difference in understanding the SMC? Thank you. And the other question in the back row? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, hello. You've got uh, the microphone. Yes. My name is Rassan. I'm, I'm from MSF Middle East Unit. Uh, my question regarding the malaria prophylaxis, do you think having alternative uh, 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 medication preparation like oral suspension or syrup could provide better compliance and continuity of, of prophylaxis for children? Because I think it's hard to, to believe that a toddler or four months baby can easily take a pill. Thank you. Any other questions waiting? Yes, by the pillar, halfway back. Thanks. I'm Tom from. And by the pillar, two thirds of the way back. I'm not... Tom from MSF Southern Africa. Just again, a bit similar question, Bashir. I, I'm, I was a bit unclear what the operational question around why you did not do dot in both in all, in all groups for the first dose, given it's a long-acting drug. It's fairly usual to give the first dose of SP. Uh, when when somebody is seen with pregnant women. Was there an operational reason? Was it somehow going to be less feasible to give the first dose by dot with the children? Why didn't, why was that in okay. question? Uh, yeah. person in the middle and then the person by the pillar. Rogitech, Rogitech Mensa unit. Um, 
Well, it's, uh, my question is about the diphtheria outbreak presentation. I understand that that's, of course, it's a real time. It's about the real time analysis. Um, but are you able to share information about the case fatality rates with regard to the, the, the respective subgroups in terms of severity and age groups? Thanks. Okay, and the final question for now by the pillar. Uh, yes. Uh, so I'm Isabel, I'm an uh, entrepreneur and the founder of Immersive Rehab. And uh, my question is about, I guess to Matt, uh, about the randomized uh, clinical tr trials that you were doing. How um, do they, could you make a comparison between trials done in the Western world and how you approach them where you are working? And, um, and yes, yeah, kind of the health economic model around that as well. Okay. That's, uh, we'll, uh, we'll answer those now and see how we get on for time. You have got one, have you, Charles? Yeah. You've got a question? I've got a question, yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of the case fatality rates for diphtheria, uh, overall, the case fatality rate for the outbreak was less than 1%. Um, we haven't fully broken that down yet, but it was quite low and, and lower than certainly expected in terms of, of diphtheria. Uh, one of the questions that has come out was actually, was the case definition too sensitive and were all of the cases that were reported as suspected indeed diphtheria? Um, because the lab capacity at the time for confirmatory testing was extremely low. So we were seeing more than 100 cases a day, but the maximum amount of cases that could be tested per day were 15. So. Um, we will, yeah, we don't really have a definitive answer in terms of the breakdown. Okay. Pass along the line. Who's next? Yes, so for the question about uh, if we, if, uh, whether we reported the results of uh, our findings, yes, we reported the results to the Ministry of Health and so some partners are taking care of it now. So they consider our recommendation and SMC is being uh, implemented to order with, with other partners. So as for the question uh, to uh, why did we choose non-DOT, actually is much simpler. And we assume that uh, after some years of SMC, caregivers have already the experience to, to do the SMC. So it's going to be cost effective, actually, because uh, there is no need to have a, an agent to, to describe. So actually, that's one of the reasons. So for the question about uh, other malaria prophylaxis, I will ask if you yeah, just have a question about other malaria prophylaxis. <laughs> I didn't hear that question. What's uh, this delegation? Yes. yes. No, one thing I did want to clear up uh, was the question about uh, who's targeted for SMC. SMC, by definition, is for under fives. It's for preschool children alone. Um, there have, they have expanded it to five to ten-year-olds in Senegal, or five to nine-year-olds in Senegal, and there they're using school-based strategies. But SMC is specifically for preschool-age children in SL. Um, and then I'll just jump in. The, the, to answer the question about the matching is we didn't have that we didn't have um, reliable incidence data from these areas and prevalence data from the villages. So we just, just chose to age match, or to, to match by village to, to preclude any, any potential problems. And then I had a question about trials in the developed world. Um, meningococcal meningitis in the developed world, uh, outbreaks are of a very different scale and a very different style. They're often in college dorms or military barracks uh, where they have a big outbreak is ten, tens of cases. Um, in the Sahel, uh, meningococcal meningitis outbreaks, I mean, the historical example is in Kano in 1996 when there were 150,000 cases uh, with a 10% case fatality or 15% case fatality in Kano. Uh, so it's much, much, it, it's, it's a different beast altogether. Uh, it's very much linked to the, the seasonality. Uh, as soon as it rains, the epidemics are over. Um, it's, it's just a, it's a different beast. It's the same disease, but it's a completely different dynamic. So I don't think there's a real comparison to doing that sort of a trial in the developed world. Even of the studies that have been done on prophylaxis in the developed world, there are very, very few. I think there's four that were included in a meta-analysis for the most recent WHO recommendations. Uh, and they're all based on a very, very small number of cases. So it's really not, not at all the same thing. Thank you. 
Uh, we've got time for a couple more questions, if there are any. Yes? Uh, and another one <laughs> by the pillar. Yeah, behind the pillar. Yeah. And are you just stretching, or are you asking a question? <laughs> Is that Pilates or a question? <laughs> it's Pilates. And one up here. I think um, if we can take three for the moment. Yeah. So let's do the first one down here in front. Okay. Thanks. Uh, my question is to, to Matt. Um, actually, two questions. Um, one is uh, you mentioned that WHO needed more evidence. Um, can you just tell us what that evidence uh, uh, that was needed is. Uh, and the, the other question is, as, as you know, this, um, the, the issue of resistance in communities uh, when you do a mass um, vaccination or, or at least a vaccination at, uh, at community level is, is still an issue for discussion um, or ongoing discussion, as you say. Um, uh, two questions is enough. Uh, would you so tell us who you are, question. <laughs> Yes. It was the beginning of a question, Eddie. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry. Hurry up. <laughs> okay. Finish um, it then. Quick question. Tell us who you are. Um, did yeah. you think the method that you used is good yeah. enough, or you yeah. should uh, actually find another way of demonstrating resistance development? Thank you. Uh, by the pillar, behind the pillar. Uh, Estrella yes. Lazarus, MSF. Uh, so it's for the diphtheria outbreak. The, while we were responding to the outbreak in Bangladesh, we were also responding to an outbreak in Yemen. Was the same modeling proposed to, to be used for the outbreak in Yemen, or was it only used for Bangladesh? Okay, thank you. And there was one down here. Yeah. Who's got the microphone? Yeah. Hi, thanks. Thanks to everybody for your presentations. Bev Stringer, MSF. It, May follow on from that question about diphtheria. So you had it, um, the outbreak in various countries you mentioned already. I wonder how many of those MSF was responding in. And also just read, actually, that diphtheria has been with us since the fifth century. And we've been managing over the centuries to control it somehow. But obviously, in India, there has been concern about control for some time. But are you, are you reflecting beyond coverage of vaccination on why you have it popping up um, at the moment. OK. Is there one more? Yes? Last one? Yeah, uh, just a quick one. So uh, for Matt and Bashir as well, it looked like in the village level treatment, uh, you ended up treating 76% of the population. So you know, that's probably not feasible at a large scale. Uh, are there certain, well, maybe. OK. Talk to that. No, 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 finish your question. That I guess I was just wondering if there's certain settings where you can imagine it making sense, maybe lower prevalence settings where you would not be treating 76% of the population. Right, who's going first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, so you were asking about Yemen uh, if we could have done or if we did the modeling there. No, we didn't. And I just want to say that those models are very specific of the place still because there's a lot of information in there which is actually not just uh, not just numbers it's uh, there's a lot of other information in there and we maybe could have done one but it would maybe have been a completely different model depending on the situation uh, so no we didn't do anything for Yemen and so then for the other sort of two-part question of Bev, um, of the, the five outbreaks that were happening globally, MSF was involved with Bangladesh and Yemen. Um, and in terms of, of reflecting on, on why we see this cropping up, I think it's really important to understand how the vaccine works because the vaccine is not against the actual bacteria, it's against um, the toxin that the bacteria can produce. So the bacteria still lurks. Um, out in various populations and as you see declining in health systems and, and populations not being continuously vaccinated for those preventable diseases, then over time you will also see that popping up again. Okay. Um, 
to Cipro in terms of the evidence that's needed. So I think historically, so one of the reasons we look at attack rates is because it allows us to compare epidemics. Uh, the attack rate in the control arm was 451 per 100,000. That's a medium-sized outbreak on historical standards. Um, and it happened at the end of the season. Uh, this was a short outbreak over four or four weeks. I think there's some questions about duration of protection. So I would like to see, I, I was a policymaker, I would like to know, well, if this was a big outbreak that started in February and was going to last for three more months before the rain came, would you still have the same results? Uh, and I'd also be curious to know about what happens in cities where transmission patterns might be different uh, than in, in the rural area where, where this trial was done. And I think there's also concerns about antibiotic resistance, which is a nice segue into the next question about, is this the right thing to do? Is this the right methods to have used to evaluate this, this question? Um, as a background, so Epicentre has actually been working in that area for a, over a decade, and we have historical data about uh, rates of antibiotic resistance in that, in that population from even like 10 years ago. We were looking at about 30% of, of kids admitted to hospital had super resistant bugs um, growing, uh, not the carriage of cyprus and bugs. So we were very, very surprised <laughs> by these results, to say the least. Uh, I think had we known that this was going to be the results, you know, when we planned the trial, maybe we would have thought about something different. But the problem is it's actually difficult to imagine what you would do. I mean, if your concern is resistant invasive disease due to an enterobacter, I mean, what, I mean are you going to monitor you just you wouldn't ever have the power to say, oh, well, this month I had two resistant salmonella cases in my hospital versus three after the super resistant, uh, after the super distributions. It would be really, really tough to actually design a study that would detect a difference if there was one. So I think that we're sort of left, and especially now that we have this result, we're sort of left with this method that is admittedly unsatisfying. Uh, but it's also doable in the field. Uh, we can take stool samples at home. We can inoculate them in the carry blair. We can take them back to our lab and, and plate them up. And th that's sort of much more doable than sort of doing uh, a massive community-wide uh, invasive disease surveillance program. Um, and then lastly, and I, I want Bashir to say this too, um, the 76% coverage, I'm not sure that that's I'm not sure that, so of doing this trial. It was really tough. We we had a lot of ideas about how it was going to go in the beginning, and we thought that the, doing the distributions would be really tough. In the end, that was the easiest part. Uh, you got like a you can treat uh, a thousand people in a half a day, two nurses, uh, a plastic table, and a nurse's aide. And I mean, it's that part was honestly easy. Most of it is. <laughs> so I mean, I, I, doing the trial again makes me a little bit scared because it's, 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 it's actually do the study is tough, mm -hmm. but to do the strategy, it was yeah. just open your mouth, you know? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Speakers, are you all done? No more questions to ask, answer? I just want to say thank you again to the speakers for a super afternoon. You can see what I meant when I said this would be the exciting bit. And uh, it, it really remains for me to say, it just shows how doing your best and making a sensible contingency decision how to go forward can save lives, families, local communities and uh, businesses. It can avert a bigger disaster and you can learn something from your results to pass on to the next people who have to deal with something. So thank you very much. I've really enjoyed your presentations. And it's time for me to hand over to the MC now. Thank you.